Picture this, a Euro game that has a large board, is worker placement, mixed with tableau building, and you are trying to connect cities to gain connection points and many more stuff crammed into a board game. It sounds a little like VG Culture meets Ticket to Ride meets Power Grid and you can swap these games in with like-minded games if you want. Sounds like a bit of a mess and a been there, done that kind of situation, right? Well, you would be right and wrong at the same time. Let's dive into Carnegie with our first impressions. Let me for once try and get some sort of order in my video. So let's start with the basics, continue with the goal of the game, going over the setup, playing around, scoring, what I liked, what I didn't like, and if I have any suggestions of games like Carnegie. Carnegie is a game that was on Kickstarter in January of 2021 and released in 2022. It is a game for one to four players and it is a heavy Euro game and should take around 40 minutes per player to play. In Carnegie, players need to get the most victory points, like in most Euro games. Victory points can be scored in a lot of ways, but the most notable ones are gifts, connections and returning your worker to your tableau. Before my friends arrive, I always try to set up the game. With Carnegie, that is possible, but you can't finish the setup on your own. Part of the setup requires a player to make certain choices. You can't do that for them. For the setup, you need to place the map on the table, the tableaus with their sliders, a market of departments, resources, your extra meeples and discs. I found it took up quite a bit of table space, and I wasn't sure if the board or the departments were the main point of the focus to start with. We found out pretty fast the board is the main focus point. You should, however, check all departments and their abilities before starting the game. After a setup for four players, the board and the player boards should look something like this. Carnegie revolves around taking actions. The first player decides which of the four types of actions the players can take. These actions let you move your meeples, get resources, build buildings, or do research. Once a player has chosen one of these four action types, the marker is placed next to that spot. Now, placed meeples on the indicated zones can be retrieved, and if you choose to do so, you can receive those benefits as indicated on the track. If the action you have chosen moved the marker into a gift spot, players can donate money to a charity to reap end game scoring points. If you don't have the required amount of money, you're in tough luck. So if the player chooses to use a move action, now only these meeples will generate move actions. So in this case, they, these meeples would be able to move nine spaces. Let's say, for instance, we did a management action. In this case, we have one meeple that is usable and we can either choose to generate the three money or one material, or we could send the meeple off to generate a one time six dollars and two crates. If we choose to do so, it is placed on the map somewhere on the space that we like. Once it can be retrieved, for instance, if we would move it to west, then once this marker hits west, the meeple will be retrieved in our lobby. But it could take a while before West is triggered. The next player now chooses an action and we don't know what the next player will choose. So we might lose this meeple for more than a couple of turns. So this is generally where the biggest part of the strategy lies. So as I said, we would do a move action. We handled the move action and now we have the ability to activate any workers that are lying down. In this case you can see we have three workers here lying down, one here and one here. We can pay the cost to activate these workers. These are free, but as you can see we only have one dollar available. So we can't activate any of these and we can only activate these. So this part of our turn wasn't the most successful part. So on to the scoring. As I said before, there are a couple of ways to earn victory points in Carnegie. 
The most obvious ones are connections, gifts, outright victory points for buildings or upgrades and victory points you can get for returning a meeple. For a single gift you can never get more than 12 victory points, though you can have more than one of your discs in a column. There is even a department that lets you place a disc on top of someone else's disc. What did I like about Carnegie? Well, again, it's a first impressions video, so my opinion may change over time, but I really like the mechanic of one player choosing an action for everyone. For me, it felt like it was implemented the right way. It's not overpowering, especially if you play with four players, and you have a joker that lets you swap out the chosen action of someone else for an action of your choice that only you can take once. Choose wisely. Every choice is strategic if playing with the right group. A lot of reviews I watched before playing said it's prone to analysis paralysis. We played Carnegie with four players, of which two are known for having this disability, and yet it did not happen. Maybe it was luck, maybe it was getting to know the game, but even though we were slow gamers, we finished it and without any moaning about taking too long. I was gladly surprised. I really enjoyed the system of placing meeples on the board and being strategic about where to place them and how many to place them and how many do you return to your lobby. There is really some depth to this system thanks to the bonuses you can get via the track and the bonuses you can unlock for doing research. At first we thought that getting the bonuses for doing research were way too powerful, but we discovered that there is an engine in this as well, sort of a flywheel mechanic, yet with a natural barrier that doesn't let you get too powerful too fast. The last thing I also thought was well implemented is the way resources work. You need cubes for two things, new departments and buildings. You need money for two things, donations and activating a worker. In Carnegie there is no abundance of resource types and there is not a million ways to spend your cash. That said, I never felt I had too much or not enough money or cubes. Yet, twice when a player triggered a donation, I didn't have any money. It didn't bother me because it wasn't part of my plan. There were times I had to scramble for cubes, but again, once you realize that part of the engine is also on the sliders, it starts working for you. Now on to what I didn't like. One thing that I believe should be improved is the scoring part of this game. Like with Anno 1800, of which we made a review, you can watch right here. Don't worry, pause this video and come back later on. There you are again. Like I said with Uno 1800, when the game ends, you have no clear idea of who is going to be the winner. 95% of the points scored in this game are end scoring. About 5% of the game's scoring is visible during gameplay. Now we don't play with kingmakers or breakers, but we do always try to make a game generally competitive. You can do that with Carnegie, but you don't know who that competition really is. In our game, three of us were very close to each other. No one expected one player would score so high. It is not game breaking, but it takes a bit of the fun away in my gaming group. Most board games that have a higher difficulty or at least have a lot of moving parts tend to have a sort of afterthought put in the game. In Carnegie, the main game board feels like a bit of an afterthought. When I say that, I mean the part of building connections. Sure, I get why it's in the game, but it's not at home. Something feels off. Why is California worth two points and has such a bad connection? Is it to create tension? Probably. But if you start the game and you are the last player, there is a genuine chance that you will never be able to connect California. And that just is a little bit off. Is there a game in our collection that is comparable to Carnegie? In short, no. Or not directly, that is. 
It feels quite a bit like Brass Birmingham, though it's in no way comparable. It's not your typical worker placement game like Stone Age or Viticulture. It's nothing like Ticket to Ride or Power Grid. It's somewhere in the visual elements of those games, but it's not like them. So we love to play Carnegie and we'll be sure to play it again soon. What are your feelings about Carnegie? Did you agree with us or not? Do you know a comparable game? Let us know in the comments. That's it for today. Thank you for watching and we'll see you in the next video. So we love to play Carnegie and we'll be sure to play it again soon. Boom! <laughs> <laughs>